Hi there, my name is Michelle Cashmore and in today's video I'll be showing you how I painted this robin. I used acrylic paints on a 5 inch by 7 inch ampersand gesso board. My reference image for this came from Paint My Photo which I really like as a resource for reference images. Now on to the tutorial itself. As usual I start off with my background. With acrylics it's much easier to do the background without the main subject first then add the subject in later over the top of what's already been painted. That means I don't have to worry about working around my subject. I want this background to be quite soft, blurry and muted, as it's showing a cold winter morning. So I'm using greys, blues and soft browns. I'm keeping the paint wet by using an airbrush filled with water to mist the panel. The big brush you see me using to blend and soften my edges is actually a makeup blusher brush. You can also get special artist mop brushes, but the makeup brushes work just as well, are usually cheaper and usually don't shed as much. I wasn't really happy with my first background layer. The paint was streaky and the effect wasn't as soft as I wanted, so I painted over it and started again. What I should have done is add a solid base layer of grey first, let that dry and then do a layer on top where I worked wet into wet. But the great thing about acrylics is that they're so easy to fix mistakes with. If I don't like how a section has turned out, I just let it dry and then paint over the top of it. Once my background is dry, I use white transfer paper to transfer my drawing onto the panel. Then I move on to the branch the robin is standing on. I first block in the basic colours and shadows in the branch, paying attention to the light and dark areas on my reference. Once I'm happy with the base layer on the branch, I start to add the frosty details. I'm actually using two different white pigments for this. For the more translucent areas in the centre of the branch, I'm using mixing white, which is a fairly transparent white. For the stronger white highlights around the edges, I'm using titanium white, which is a very opaque, very strong white pigment. It's important to note that not all white pigments are the same, and the different ones are suited better to different applications. For little details like the frosted bark, I don't have to get every line absolutely perfect, that would take forever. I just need to make sure that my texture is close enough, that my lines are the right direction and length and that they're not too uniform. When moving on to the robin, I again block in some base colours. Having a base mid-tone down makes it much easier to layer in the details over the top. Because this is such a small painting, I blocked in all areas of the robin first, but for larger paintings I will often block in a section and add the details there before moving on to another area. Some artists like to always block in an entire painting before adding details. It's entirely up to you which you prefer, there's no right or wrong way to work. Here I'm starting to add the details around his face. It's important to pay close attention to your references here to make sure the feathers are going in the right direction and the lights and shadows are all in the right place. I actually made the shadows on his face too pronounced here at first, which became obvious when I stood back and checked it against the reference. Then I was able to go back and soften the shadows up a bit. As I mentioned earlier, one of the great things about acrylics is how easy it is to make adjustments on areas you've already painted. If something looks bad, then just paint over it again. 
Acrylics do tend to go through an ugly stage in early layers. Don't worry if this happens, just keep adding layers until you're happy. It's a medium that can't really be overworked. Here I've moved on to adding the feather details on his chest. Again, paying close attention to the length of the feathers, the direction they're going in and where the lights and darks are. This robin is quite fluffed up against the cold here, so there's a bit more texture here than there would probably be normally. The brushes I'm using here are mostly Pro Art acrylics brushes, which I believe are synthetic tack on brushes. For fine details such as feathers and fur, I use the acrylics rigor brushes, as they have a fine point to them but can still hold quite a lot of paint due to the length of the bristles. Fur and feathers usually take quite a few layers of detail to look good. They need to be built up with multiple brush strokes. The multiple layers help to give the feathers depth and texture. For the white part of the robin's body, notice that it's not actually white. I used a lot of greys, blues and browns. White reflects a lot of what's around it. If I had made the area all stark white, it wouldn't have looked realistic or three-dimensional. I saved white for just a few highlights in the lighter areas. Here I decided to pause working on the feathers until I finished his feet underneath. It's always easier to work on areas that are further back first, then add closer areas over the top, than trying to work around lots of tiny little details. The feet were a good example of having to pay close attention to the reference photo. His feet have what are almost like scales on them. I looked closely at how they overlapped and where the creases in the scales were. They weren't quite what I would have expected. And from here it's just adding the last little feather details. I really liked the glow that the feathers on the right hand side had and wanted to make sure I captured that impression of our winter sun just starting to reach him. And that is it. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you'd like to be kept up to date with my latest work or see more of my videos, then please do subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, where I post regular work in progress updates of whatever I'm currently working on. Hope to see you again soon.